قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق والأستق القائلين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال إنما أشكو بثي وهزني إلى الله وعالم من الله ما لا تعلمون يا بني اذهبوا فتحسسوا من يوسف وأخيه ولا تيأسوا من روح الله إنه لا ييأس من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرين إلا القوم الكافرون فلما دخلوا عليه قالوا يا أيها العزيز مسنا وأحلنا الضر وجئنا ببضاءة مزجاة فأوفلنا الكيل وتصدق علينا إن الله يجز المتصدقين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآل محمد. A couple of weeks ago, we concluded the last part of our conversation, just part number eleven of Surat Yusuf, at verse number eighty-six, where the brothers of Yusuf, alayhi salam, alayhi salam, they return back to their father Yaqub, and they tell their father that unfortunately. Uh, the king of Egypt, he has taken our brother, uh, Binyamin, Benjamin. And he says that he has stolen from him and he will not return him back. <laughs> of course, we mentioned last time that this was the strategy of Yusuf alayhi salam in order to eventually fulfill his ultimate objective, which was to be reunited with his father and to also teach his uh, brother is a little bit of a lesson, but at the same time also demonstrate um, the mechanisms that he would employ in order to bring his community to guidance, this being one manifestation of that reality. So when they return back to their father, Yaqub alayhi salam, they tell him the situation, and to which Yaqub is overwhelmed with grief for he has lost another one of his sons after he had already felt that this might be a potential, this might be a possibility. To which he then tells his uh, children, he tells them that وَتَوَلَّ أَنْهُمْ وَقَالَ يَا أَسَفَ عَلَى يُوسُفْ وَأَبْيَضَّتْ أَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَذِيمٌ In the verse before that, in verse number 83, he says قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا فَسَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ he tells them that this situation, uh, the loss of another son and your lack of care of Yusuf so many decades earlier, this is what your own souls have done to you. Inshallah, one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reunite us. And then he enters into the state of grief and they tell him, Oh, our father, every time you remember or you recollect the name of Yusuf, you enter into the state of depression and grief and sadness, forget about it, you know, enough. To which he responds, This grief of mine is grief that I complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of du'a. This is my uh, conviction in God and I realize that no one can put me out of my distress, distress excuse me, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we stopped at this verse over here. What happens thereafter? We'll continue, inshallah, verse number 87. In verse number 87, Yaqub, he then instructs his sons what to do. It's not such they're just going to allow for their brother Bini Amin to remain in Egypt. Uh, and of course, Yaqub and his children were in Canaan, contemporary Palestine. He states, Ya baniya idhabu fatahassasu mi Yusuf wa akhihi. وَلَا تَيْعَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْعَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ It's a really important verse. He says, go my sons and return back to Egypt. Go back to the king. But when you go back to him, you have one primary responsibility. Your primary responsibility is to go and look for Yusuf and his brother. Meaning, go bring back my children. If we just rewind just a tad bit, just a little bit, if you recollect, we talked about the fact that this community was now being plagued by a really serious famine. Serious. And it even impacted Yaqub It impacted the people of Canaan. 
the people within that region, all across the region, people were struggling. And they themselves went back a second time to Yusuf, not of course knowing that he was Yusuf, but back to Egypt in order to procure the, 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 the wheat and the barley and whatever provisions they were being given because they needed to survive. They needed food. They were dying. Over here, Yaqub doesn't say, go and bring me back food, right? But I only have one desire and that is bring me back my two children. These brothers, their worry was that if they don't have Bin Amin, they don't have Benjamin, then they're not going to get the food also that comes along with him, right? And the little bit of rations that were given and distributed by the government. So he tells them, Really important. And he says, and don't despair from God's mercy. Don't give up. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really vast. And you've made a lot of mistakes, he's telling his children. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've committed a lot of errors. You've done a lot of wrong things, including being irresponsible with my children, including holding all of this situation and making it very, very neglect. You've, you've, you've been very, very neglectful. Yet, in spite of the fact that for decades you have been committing the same sin after the same sin and completely negligent of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ta'asum illa. Don't ever despair uh, from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God is great. And He always will give us the opportunity to walk through His door and to find Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْعَصُ مَرَّوْهِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ That surely no one despairs in God except for the disbelievers. Meaning that he's telling them at that moment, it's a lesson for all of us as well, that not only is the door of God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's generosity open for every single one of us consistently, but truly it is one of the gravest sins that we can commit to feel that we are not compatible with receiving the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People say often, like, who am I to make dua to God? Who am I to like get a response to this you know, request? Who am I? No, God has created us to find Him. And He has consistently left His door open for us to walk through. And it's so important for us to be a recognition that this God of ours is that great that he never turns anyone away. He never turns anyone away from being a recipient of his mercy, no matter how many times we've committed the same sin, the same act of transgression, or had the same sense of carelessness about him as we have had in our previous lives. We make mistakes, we fall, we slip. At the end of the day, the potential to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and walk through the door of his mercy and of his grace is consistently present. So don't despair in the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a hadith, for instance, that says, In Allah sayanshur rahmatihi yawm al qiyama hatta iblis yatma'u fi rahmatihi. That on the day of judgment, that God will distribute his mercy to the extent that even Iblis, even Shaytan himself, will feel that I will be forgiven today. Something to this, the Mamun of the Rawayat. And another hadith, or numerous hadith without getting into all of them, speak to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if we slip and we fall and we make the same mistake time and time and time again, of course, that's not what we want to do, but God will never shut us out of the potential to receive and to reap his forgiveness. One day a man, he comes to Imam Muhammad al-Baqir and he says, O oh, grandson of the Messenger of God, he says, you mentioned the mercy of God. How vast is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for someone like me? He says, I commit a sin and I always make a commitment to God that I won't go back to that. So the Imam asks him, he says, when you made that commitment to not return back to that sin, were you sincere in asking Allah? He says, of course. I meant it with all of my heart, with all of my tears, with all of my being. I believed that I would never return back, but I was deceived by my soul. To which Imam al-Baqir tells him, 
He says, even if that happens time and time again, as long as you return back with that same sense of sincerity, the potential for you to receive the reward and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always present. And that being said, it all goes back to that intentionality and that sincerity that we have in our communication with Allah. Because someone says, oh, well, the, we should never become sort of over-reliant on God's mercy and assume that, oh, but I'll just ask for forgiveness for, from God tomorrow. And we know that within our own selves. And that's where it becomes dangerous. Anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, quoting Yaqub salamu alayhi, don't despair in God's mercy. Don't despair in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la ya, innahu la ya'asu man rawha Allah illa al-qawm al-kafirun. Surely, the only ones who despair in God are the disbelievers, are those who don't have any faith. So he sends them out. He says, now go and return back to Egypt. Go and return back. And you have the responsibility to bring back Yusuf, ask about him, you know, mention his name. Perhaps someone will know him. Perhaps someone will, perhaps someone will know where he is. These brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they believe that their brother had died decades ago. They had no anticipation that there might be a potential for them to find him. That was not even in their imagination. And as you'll see, they weren't really concerned about it, nor were they even asking about it. Their objective was to bring home food and to hopefully be able to bring back their other brother, Binyamin. فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ قَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الْعَزِيزِ مَسَّنَا وَأَحْلَنَا الضُّرُّ وَجَئْنَا بِبَذَاءَةٍ مُزْجَاتٍ فَأُوفِّلَنَا الْكَيْلِ وَتَصَدَّقَ عَلَيْنَا So they set out a third time. What happens? When did they set out the first time? Anyone remember? They set out the first time to go to Egypt to bring back some food, right? Why did they come back a second time? Anyone remember? Because he, had, they, he wanted to see Benyamin to verify that like, they were getting like, the Exactly, free. right? Yeah, yeah. And he had given them extra provisions just so that they would um, trust him. So he came back a second time with Benyamin. And now this is the third time. The first time, they built a good sort of relation, right? Yusuf Ali was very kind to them. He, 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 he had their trust. The second time, they were honored. Remember, he gave them this lavish feast and he said, oh, this is your brother, why don't you come and sit next to me? You know, honoring his own brother who comes from the same mother and father, Binyamin and Benjamin. And the third time, they've come as criminals, you know, <laughs> all in order to teach. Uh, them a little bit of a lesson, Yusuf alayhi salam wanted to do so. And people, when they entered into the city, and when they entered into the region, they were, they were treated like the, 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 the robbers from Canaan, right? These are the troublemakers who came and they stole, they stole the cup of, you, the, of the king. How dare they? Of course, again, all part of the strategy, strategy excuse me, of Yusuf alayhi salam. فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ قَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الْعَزِيزِ When they entered upon him, they said, O oh, king, it's us again. Messana wa ahlan al So we have come to you. We have come to you, but we need you to recognize that our family, our situation back home is really bad. We're going through a lot of hardship. We're struggling financially. We don't have a lot of food. We don't have a lot of, you know, wealth. And we also lost our brother, our father is elderly, he's sick, he's ailing, he's grieving. Have a little bit of mercy on us. He says, and we have, we have come with whatever we have come with. This is the only things that we own, right? We have a little bit of wealth, we have a little bit of property. We don't have anything. So what do they ask for? He doesn't say, you know, give us our brother back. What do they say? فَأَوْفِلَنَ الْكَيْلِ He says, so, you know, those provisions, so about that food, right? Can you give it to us? وَتَصَدَّقْ عَلَيْنَا And be generous to us. Now, some commentators of the Qur'an, they say that, you know, they were being sincere. And when they meant, and when they said, you know, وَتَصَدَّقْ عَلَيْنَا And be generous to us, they didn't mean it by means of like monetary wealth or by food, wheat, and barley. But they actually meant, but just give us back our brother, right? But some say no, that they still came with a little bit of arrogance, you know? So give us out, give us out of these rations that you're distributing. And be, you know, be generous in, in, your, in your distribution of this food. Inna Allah, 
يَجْزِي الْمُتَصَدِّقِينَ For surely Allah, they're saying, for surely Allah will reward those who give in charity, right? <laughs> now they're invoking God's name to Yusuf alayhi salam. You know, it's very ironic if you think about it. This is the same brother who they treated in this way. Now they let their other brother, he wasn't even thinking, they weren't even thinking about him perhaps. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَجْزِي الْمُتَسَدَّقِينَ For surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He rewards the one and He grants a lot of extra reward toward those who give extra, who give in charity. Now of course, they're quoting the language of their father, right? Yaqub, who would always preach this reality to them. But nonetheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also offers us a reminder here that He undoubtedly, undoubtedly, undoubtedly will always uh, increase the reward of the mutasaddaqeen, those who give in charity. This is a quick parenthesis. Uh, there's a hadith. It states, istanzar Allah rizq bithalaf. That surely God increases our our sustenance, our wealth, by three things. Istanzar al-rizqi bil hajj, wa istanzar al-rizqi bil nikah, wa istanzar al-rizqi bil sadaqat. That God increases our sustenance via three things. Number one, when we go for Hajj, God increases our wealth. Which is amazing, right? Because Hajj is very, very expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you go for Hajj and we'll increase your, we'll increase your means. Number two, وَإِسْتَنْزَلَ الرَّزْقِ بِالنِّكَاحِ And that God increases your means by marriage, right? And marriage is also very expensive. So many people, they don't get married because of how expensive it is. Or how, the fear that they're going to fall into poverty. Of course, God makes a promise within the Quran. He states, In yakunu fuqara yuqnihim Allahu min fatla. Don't, don't not get married because of financial means. He says, if you are poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, 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 will enrich you through his own wealth. Don't worry about that, you know. That should not be the reason why you don't. And then the third, he states, the hadith is and that God increases your wealth, right, your means, when you give in charity. Right? It doesn't make any sense. I just gave my own money in charity. How am I going to get this back? You're going to get that back with, a, with, a, with an increased fault. Right? This is the divine sort of realm by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. You know? So three things which are most costly, giving out of your money physically to those in need, spending it on going for hajj, spending it on marriage, God says that these are the three keys to unlocking an increase in your means. This is the guarantee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they come to him again, they come to their brother, not knowing that of course he's their brother, Yusuf alayhi salam, and they say, please, give us our rations, perhaps return us back our brother, have mercy on us, we're really, really struggling. We're going through a hard time. They're in desperation at this moment. They can't go back to their father, right? With nothing. That would be the biggest sort of, you know, failure that they've ever experienced. They couldn't bear it anymore. قَالَ هَلْ أَلِمْتُمْ مَا فَعَلْتُمْ بِيُوسُفُ وَأَخِيهِ إِذْ أَنْتُمْ جَاهِلُونَ Yusuf alayhi salam is sitting on his throne, He's the king of the world, you know? And he's looking at these brothers of his who have now come to him in the state of utter and absolute desperation. He cares about them, still. He still loves them. But he wants to make sure that he's throwing out one more lesson to them. So God says, quoting Yusuf alayhi salam, Hal alimtum ma fa'altum bi Yusuf. He says, He says, Have you any idea what you have done to Yusuf and his brother? Uh, he says there was a time when all of you back in the day treated Yusuf and his brother really poorly do you have any idea what that meant to them now they're looking <laughs> at their brother Yusuf السلام, not knowing wondering how that you know how does he know you know about what we did to Yusuf and this was the moment, right, of authority. There's a hadith that tells us from the Prophet wasallam. It says that the most powerful man is the one when, we, when he has the ability to take revenge, he forgives. That's the most powerful human being. 
over here Yusuf salam, is looking at them and now they're in the state of utter abject poverty and need and abasing themselves in front of Yusuf so he gives them one last chance you know he says Hal alimtum ma fa'altum bi Yusuf do you have any idea what Yusuf went through do you have any idea what his brother went through meaning that they used to give Bini Amin also a very difficult time wa akhihi idha antum jahilun and they look at him and they're wondering how could he have any idea what we did 40 years ago to our child brother at that time? To which they respond, قَالَ, قَالُوا, أَإِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ Yusuf." I can't imagine, right? It makes me emotional to think. They're all staring at him and they say, wait a minute. أَإِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ Yusuf." Are you Yusuf? قَالْ أَنَا Yusuf وَهَذَا أَخِي He says, yes. I am Yusuf and this is my brother. قَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَسْبَرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُذِيءُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ He says, yes, I am Yusuf and this is my brother. And surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this station. He has blessed us with this. He has honored us with this. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَسْبَرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُذِيءُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Surely those who have taqwa, those who are God conscious, and those who are patient, God does not waste the reward of those who do good. This is another time where God mentions this verse in the Quran, quoting Yusuf It's a common theme, like I said before. This is really beautiful. Again, they have the capacity. He has the capacity to do whatever he pleases to them. Punish them, discipline them, anything he wants to. Yet over here, he desires to teach them a lesson. He says, you're struggling in this way for everything that I had to endure and for everything that we had to go through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated our station on this day, but this is out of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَسْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُذِيءُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسَنِينَ Again, God does not waste the good deed of those who do good. So a couple of lessons that we can derive from this, like we did before as well. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَسْبِرْ Surely those who are God conscious, number one. Those who whenever they're going through a good time or a bad time, they're always present, uh, or, or they always feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know that the good comes from, God, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they should be thankful and that through the difficult time they have to be patient because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and they submit to this decree of the Creator. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَسْبِرْ And it's going to require patience. Anyone who desires to find closeness and proximity to God has to be diligent. And amongst the paths that they're going to have to endure is loneliness, is challenge, is difficulty around finances, around relationships, around a whole host of things. This is what it means. In this life, we are bound and we are shackled by tribulations. It's important for us to remain patient. Yusuf السلام, has to go through an immense number of trials and tribulations. From a young age, to his adolescence, to when he was thrown into a prison, and so on and so forth. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُذِيءُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسَنِينَ And because of the fact that we accumulated all of those good deeds, and we did everything that we could to please our Lord during the course of all of these decades. And because we had to go through all of the difficulties that we had to go through, God has given us this rank. And He has given us this ability. Yusuf is king. Bini Amin, through him, as um, we come to know via our ahadith, he is the inheritor of the prophethood of his father and of Yusuf. Yaqub, Yusuf, the next prophet, is Bini Amin himself. So again, they've been honored in a very unique and distinct way. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُذِيءُ وَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ قَالُوا تَلَّهِ لَقَدْ آثَرَكَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْنَا وَإِن كُنَّا لَخَاتِينَ And all of these brothers now, they look at Yusuf and they realize, wait a minute. We certainly like made a lot of mistakes. And they turn back to God. They say, we swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that surely God has chosen you and he has preferred you amongst his best and most choicest of servants and we are the ones who made a mistake. 
they're turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Albeit many years later, albeit after all of this time again, which also gives us the hope that we need to have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the potential for us to be recipients of His mercy and of His grace are always present. Qala la tathriba alaykum al He responds, Yusuf alayhi salam. This is important again. He says that today there's going to be no judgment. There's going to be no vengeance. I'm not going to harm you. I'm not going to hurt you. It's all good. That surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. And He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Look at that. My friends, none of us ever took a prophet and threw him into a well and abandoned him. None of us treated our family members in that such a harsh way where they even thought that they had killed him. We could do a lot of wrongs to those around us, to our family, to our friends, toward our community, toward people that we work with, to whoever. But at the end of the day, they committed amongst the gravest and worst, you know, sins that someone could commit. Forget like breaking a relationship with, you know, your, your, your blood relative, which is sort of very, very serious within our tradition. But more than that, they even believe that they killed him. Yet over here, Yusuf salam tells them that the door of mercy for you is open. And he didn't, he didn't you know, throw it in their face, so to say, thereafter. He tells them, don't worry about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. He didn't say, you know, I could do a lot of things to you right now. I could, I could say this to you. I could throw you in prison for seven years. I could, he could have done anything. And he would have been justified in doing so. But he never threw it in his face, so to say. Just before we get into this verse, it's really important that when we do someone a favor, like we learn from Yusuf as well as many of our hadith and so on, that when we do someone a favor, we don't do it solely for them, but we also are God conscious and we do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake as well. And we should never remind someone when we've done someone a favor that we did them that favor once, you know, a long time ago. It was done, it's done, it's finished. It's not good etiquette, it's not haram. It's not good etiquette to always remind someone that one time that you helped them, that one time that you did something for them, now they owe you one, you know, whatever it might be. Sure, it might be an agreement, an arrangement that way, but fundamentally when you do something for someone, it shouldn't be such that you're always reminding them of that. First of all, it's not nice to do that, right? And like number two, you can't imagine how the other person feels, right? That they're always indebted to you. And number three, that means you really didn't do it for God's sake in the first place. So you can't give money to a beggar and then tomorrow when they come to you again and they say, hey, can I borrow a dollar or can I have a dollar? You tell them, well, I gave you one yesterday, so why should I give you one? You know, and every time you see them, remember that last time I gave you money? You know, it actually reminds me of this funny anecdote. So that one day there was this um, like butcher, he was working in his butchery and there was this guy walking down the street and he like saw the butcher about to like cut, you know, the chicken or whatever it was. And he like opened the door and he screamed out. He's like, hey butcher, be careful. You're gonna cut your finger off. So he's like, yeah, don't worry. I'm, I'm a professional, I'm good, you know? And he's like, thank you, goodbye. The next day, he, the, this guy was walking down the street, the same guy, and he walks by the butcher shop. And he's walking with a friend of his, and he enters into the door and he says, he says, he's telling his friend, he said that, hey friend, he said, yesterday I saved that guy's finger, you know? Um, the third day he comes with a group of five people and they go into the, they go into the, uh, the butcher shop and he tells all of them, he says, hey, you know, a few days ago I saved that guy's finger. He's bragging about this, you know, favor that he thinks that he did for the butcher. So anyway, after a couple of days, he brings a larger crowd and a larger crowd and a larger crowd, and he has like a hundred people in his butchery, and the guy's telling them, um, hey, I saved that guy's finger last week. The butcher got so fed up, he cut off his thumb and he threw it at him. He's like, you didn't save anything for me, but just stop, stop coming and throwing this in my face all the time, right? So, you know, in other words, what? That at the end of the day, nobody likes someone who's always, you know, bringing it up, so to say. Anyhow, what we learn again from Yusuf alayhi salam is that 
he has that sense of gentleness. Like we said, the most powerful man is the one who has the ability to take vengeance, but instead he forgives. قَالَ لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمُ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لَكُمْ وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاهِمِينَ We'll stop over here today, I think, because the next section is going to be a new section where Yaqub السلام, is finally reunited with his father. And we'll continue this in our next conversation. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa ala Tayyibina Tawahiri. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.